Hello, everybody. Welcome to the launch webinar for Informatica Cloud Summer 2016 release. Um, so, uh, good morning, good afternoon to all of you wherever you are, and thanks for joining the call today. In the room, we have Lalita Sundarmurthy, Eric Ho, and Abhishek Sinha here, who are from the product management side, and it's me, Anvesha Chatterjee from product marketing. So we are very excited to share all the new features and capabilities that's coming out with the launch. And uh, in um, June, the dates are going to be 11th June and 18th June. So um, with that, I would love to jump in through the slides and we have some new um, demos by our product management team to give you an idea of what's coming with the new connectivity and the new integrations. So we have a packed agenda starting out with all the new capabilities that's coming out from um, the Informatica Cloud team around the data integration um, batch and real time and the connectivity, the new connectors as well as the enhancements. And um, we have two demos and then uh, we can get into a Q&A where you know, there would be a ask a question button right below the presentation window. Please use that button if you have any questions and um, if we, we'll, uh, we'll have some time at the end, but if we don't get back on time, uh, then we'll definitely email, get in touch through email. So with that, I'm really excited. We're really excited here in the cloud team. I mean, it's um, the, uh, all the new features that's coming out is uh, something that we're gonna go through the session today is very exciting and it only validates our Informatica Cloud as the most complete end-to-end -end cloud data integration and data management platform, which enables all the hybrid use cases. And the key pillars for Informatica Cloud are around any integration pattern, which is uh, basically whatever kind of integration you have in your business to harness all the huge volumes of data that comes through. and it's for any user. It's also for any data source. So it doesn't matter if it's cloud or on-prem. And all supported by a trusted platform. With the cloud portfolio, um, if you're already using it, you probably are uh, aware of the solutions that's existing around the data integration and data management solutions supporting data warehousing, the synchronization and replication and orchestrations and customer 360, but it's expanding with our summer release. We are including more new capabilities and solutions like B2B gateway, cloud integration hub, and um, uh, IoT data integration, which Lalita will go through in details. So with that, I would like to welcome Lalita to go through all our um, new capabilities Thank you, Lalita. Thank you, Anisha. All right, let's go over the key enhancements we did on our cloud platform for R25. Um, the first one is around security. As uh, you all probably know, security is always an important area of focus for Informatica. We go through rigorous testing and validations by a third party auditor, um, and it includes not just the infrastructure, but also the platform and the various products that we have in the cloud. So the data centers on the hosting platform also go through the same processes for security and adhere to the same requirements. At this point, uh, with R25, uh, the cloud entire platform, Wizard, Rev, Informat uh, Informatica Discovery, IQ, they're all compliant to the industry regulations like HIPAA and SOC 2. And we are expanding um, you know, for, with every release. Our goal is to expand the security and testing across all cloud offerings so that you can get a complete end-to-end -end secure suite of solutions. This is the second one on the platform is around agent. Um, we are making a number of improvements to our overall agent architecture. One of the key enhancements we did in R25 um, and, and, and to some extent a little bit before that is around agent as a platform. It's essentially um, you know, improving the architecture to be a more modern microservices-based architecture. So what it will allow you to um, do is be more um, scalable and agile. Right? We are releasing this to our customers in a phased manner, so not all of you will see it immediately, 
And one of the benefits that you will notice when you get agent as a platform is a minimized downtime during upgrades. Uh, for example, uh, in the past, uh, when you have an upgrade period, the jobs that, um, if at all there are any jobs that are running, uh, they'll be shut down during that upgrade time period itself, right? So with this change, uh, what will happen is that your jobs will continue running in the old agent while we get the new agent up and running in parallel and the new jobs will automatically transition to the new agent seamlessly. So the impact to your job schedule will be very minimal and you'll see more and more enhancements around the overall agent as a platform as we release the next, um, uh, no, next releases of uh, Informatica Cloud. All right, so the next uh, set of uh, slides are around uh, the different integration and the data management platforms that Anvesa mentioned. Um, especially with R25, we're really releasing a number of new functionalities that increases our breadth of capabilities we support in the cloud, right? So let's go over each one of these details and then I'll talk about some new capabilities as well as the enhancements that uh, we've introduced on top of the current ones. So the first one is around Cloud Customer 360. As some of you may know already, Customer 360 helps you to get a single view of customer in your Salesforce uh, organizations. It helps you to detect and fix duplicate data. So if you have multiple Salesforce instances within your organization, you can use this to uh, you know, get, a, get a unified view, right? And uh, you can synchronize your business processes with, across the enterprise. In R25, uh, what we did is we have new lightweight analytics and monitoring for uh, tracking your customer data. There is also a, a Customer 360 Lightning UI, which provides faster and um, responsive user experience. There are also enhancements around notifications, alerts, so that you can you know, efficiently track your uh, performance and audits. All right, so moving on. The next one is around cloud, uh, data, cloud Data Integration Hub. This is actually a new product that we are releasing with R25. Um, and, uh, you know, for those of you who have been, you know, using Informatica, uh, you're probably familiar with the uh, on-premise data integration hub because one of the common problems that organizations have with their uh, data management architecture is an integration hairball problem, right? So as the number of applications in an enterprise grow, people quickly get into a messy hairball situation with multiple point-to-point -point integrations. Uh, and, and this is just getting worse in the cloud because you have a lot more uh, SaaS applications uh, in the cloud, right? So one of the popular patterns uh, that help manage this situation is uh, called integration hub. What it allows you to do is you can publish the data from an application, say Salesforce, into a common area and then have multiple subscribers consume data directly from that common location. So if anything changes, it becomes easier to manage in one single place. Right, so Cloud Data Integration Hub, um, again, helps you to completely automate this, manage it, and monitor all of the publications and subscriptions. And it also has very easy to use wizards. So even a less technical business user can self-service the publication and subscription. All right. So the next one is around Cloud B2B Gateway. This is also a new product that we are releasing in the cloud with R25. B2B Gateway helps you to manage and automate secure data exchange with your partner community, right? So it helps you to easily onboard your partners, manage and track all the message exchanges with them. We also have a number of out-of-the-box mappings to simplify and expedite the whole um, EDI handling, right? The first release is actually going to be focused on retail and manufacturing, and um, as we um, you know, uh, go into the next releases, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, verticalize the solution and provide support for other, other verticals. The next enhancement is around uh, intelligent structure discovery. Uh, intelligent structure discovery helps one to automatically identify the data structures, uh, right? So essentially, uh, let's say you have IoT data, machine sensor data coming in the form of log files. Oftentimes, you don't know what, how the structure looks like, right? So structure discovery, it essentially has a number of heuristic algorithms uh, in the back end, so it analyzes the input file and automatically helps you to identify the semantic structures, right? So it becomes very easy for you to parse the data so that you can extract the appropriate information and then, you know, process it and forward it to the, that, to the right consumers. So, um, again, this, there are more enhancements that is coming here. Um, uh, definitely check this out. 
Next is around data as a service. Uh, this has been there with Informatica Cloud Platform for a while. For those of you who don't know, a data as a service helps you with things like contact validation. So for example, if you want to ensure the accuracy of your customer's contact data, like validating postal addresses or emails or phone numbers, you can use our easy to use wizards to completely you know, uh, validate these data and correct it. Right? So with R25, what we have done is we've introduced new dashboards so that you can track the executed jobs, um, what the status is, um, what are some of the metrics around the um, you know, validity of the data, right? How much data is um, valid, what are invalid, et cetera. So it gives you a real nice dashboard with all of the metrics, bar charts, so that you get a better idea of, your, um, uh, of, of the data that you're dealing with. So next is around. Uh, is, is a, it's actually a project um, uh, that um, we are we are working on. It's called Project Cirrus, and it's a name of our data quality project on the cloud. Uh, we are introducing this in the beta, that which is why you are seeing uh, the the project name instead of the actual product name. So essentially, what it helps you is to assess and fix your Salesforce data. Right, so it gives you a unified dashboard to assess the quality of uh, your key Salesforce objects, like you know sales, service, monitoring. It provides easy to use um, self-service tools uh, to uh, so that the business users can define DQ rules and improve the quality of your Salesforce data. Again, as I mentioned, this is in beta right now. So if you are interested in participating in it, definitely let us know. Send us a um, send us a, you know, a, your information using the chat window that Anvesha mentioned, and we'll contact you and include you in the in the beta in the beta um, uh, cycle. I'm sure many of you are using our cloud real time functionality. Uh, again, for those of you who don't know, uh, cloud real time essentially helps you in a number of real time use cases around application integration, orchestration, and process automation. We have a number of enhancements that have uh, that we have done with our cloud real time. Um, one one uh, specific enhancement is around the support of attachments for service connectors and built-in email service. We also have a number of improvements around our head endpoints that we support, like REST and SOAP and JSON. And uh, we are also releasing a number of new connectors, and that's a theme that you will see throughout. Um, we have uh, Eric, Anvesha, and Abhishek covering the connectivity in the coming slides. Uh, so we have a lot of connectors that are going to be supported throughout the platform with you know, better support for our Amazon ecosystem, Azure ecosystem, etc. We also have, you know, within cloud uh, real-time SFTP support, um, uh, support and SAP BAPI, etc. Next is around cloud test data management. Uh, cloud test data management helps you in creating complete sandboxes for your dev and test purposes. Again, something that we've had in, uh, uh, for a while now, and we've made improvements um, in R25. So, you know, essentially, Informatica TDM helps you to retain your, you know, data characteristics, right? When you create your sandbox environment. But at the same time, ensuring that the sensitive private information like SSN or credit card information, they are all matched. Uh, and with R25, what we've done is we've added a number of out-of-the-box masking rules for data standards like PII, PCI, and PHI. And we've also added support for partial updates on sandboxes, so it becomes very easy for you to maintain these sandboxes in a, in a quick, uh, quick manner. Next is around data masking transformation. This is a transformation we, um, again, have as part of our cloud mapping designer. Uh, essentially helps you to mask the sensitive fields as part of your regular integration job. Let's say, for example, you have uh, you know, customer data in your, you know, in your system, you have to provide it to your partners, but you don't want to send all of that information, right? you want to mask some of the sensitive fields, you can use data masking transformation as part of your integration pipeline to mask the data. Uh, what we've done in R25 is make the transformation even more dynamic. Right? Uh, sometimes you, know, you don't know what fields are coming in, uh, and what are the sensitive fields? So you would want to control uh, the number of fields and the sensitive fields, let's say using at runtime, using a REST call. Um, you know, with R25, you should be able to control all of this dynamically without having to make a manual change in the cloud mapping designer itself. So a lot of productivity improvements, right? So the next one is around uh, cloud data, data integration and the mapping designer. And this is one area where we have been making a you know, number of improvements, uh, essentially to help you uh, design 
more advanced integration tasks, right? So with uh, our prior releases, we have you know added a lot of transformations. With R25, we are introducing additional transformations like sequence generator, right? This is very useful for you to automatically increment your dimension data. Uh, people do that do that a lot when you have um, when you load. Uh, dimension table, a lot of times sequence generator helps you to keep track of the incoming records and uh, create a primary key or a foreign key. And then the next time you run, you want to make sure that the primary keys get incremented from where it left off, right? So, um, it, so sequence generator helps you with that. We also have a new union transformation that will enable you to union multiple data sources that are coming in. Uh, we also have the much awaited uh, mapping variable support, again, very useful in loading incremental data. So, for example, when you're uh, uh, lay, uh, loading data for the first run, uh, people may want to capture the uh, last um, uh, run date in a mapping variable so that the next time you run that batch load, you kind of start off from where you left off and in extract the incremental data. So, map mapping variables helps you with that. So, with the R25, you should be able to do that. Um, we also have um, have made a number of improvements to the overall hierarchical structure handling. So we have a new Workday connector, which uh, Eric will be covering. Um, so it really simplifies the way you um, extract and process hierarchical data. We also have a new XML transformation that will, again, help you to uh, process hierarchical data in a much, much intuitive manner, right, in a drag-and-drop manner. And, and finally, we also have integration with our live data map uh, functionality, which is our metadata infrastructure as part of the Informatica platform. What, what, what it will enable you to do is uh, get an end-to-end -end lineage of your entire integration flows, starting with your data source all the way to your BI. So now, let's say you have data coming in from your Salesforce or Oracle, and you're you know loading that data into your uh, you know, different applications or your data warehouse and then consumed by different BI applications, you get an overall end-to-end -end picture of how your integration flows using Live Data Map. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Anvesha. Thanks. Thank you, Lalita. So, Lalita just covered the any uh, integration pattern, and our next very important aspect about Informatica Cloud is around our users. So, the the, pro the product, the platform, and the solutions are tailored towards all types of users. And it, they can be a citizen integrators, they can be business users, and they can be IT or, you know, if you're an enterprise architect. So there's, uh, there are tools and solutions for every one of you. So something that you probably used um, um, is the data wizard, and Lalita spoke briefly on that too. So we have come up with more connectivity in, in the data wizard. The one that's with R25, um, the summer release is for Oracle, and we are extending it uh, more and more to include others as well, like um, MySQL, SQL Server. So um, stay tuned. Those are all coming up. And um, um, if you're new to the data wizard, then data wizard is a tool to help you Build, uh, try and build integrations very quickly. They're out of the box um, templates and a um, lot of self service tools to help you do that easily without the need to code. Another important solution that we offered uh, to our business users, our citizen integrators, who don't want to spend a lot of time coding manually, building out integrations, is REV or data preparation tool. So with that, we empower all our um, line of business users to very easily integrate and um, transform data quickly through this tool. And it, especially in cases when you're using, um, say, Excel or you know some kind of a data file, it helps you do those uh, quick um, quick transformations without the need for any complex lookups uh, like you know that you would probably do using Excel. And most importantly, this seamlessly fits into Salesforce Wave and Tableau, for example. So if you're using any one of those, then you can use Rev to prepare the data and quickly translate it in a Tableau-specific version, like a TDE file or a Salesforce Wave. It's integrated um, into those. So with that, let's dive in to the next pillar, which is around any data. 
So what that really essentially means is that all these connectivity solutions that's coming out of Informatica Cloud is tailored uh, towards any kind of data source. It can be on-prem, it can be cloud, and with the summer release, we have certain new connectors or uh, enhanced connectors that's coming out. Workday is one of our spotlight connectors, and Eric is going to show a very nice demo to all of you. So the um, the Workday connector is essentially integrating to Workday's um, all the services around financial and HR. And it has simplified mapping, especially something that Lalitha also touched on is the, you know, the hierarchical structure. So it simplifies the hierarchical structure in a way that it makes it easy in relational style. So for the end user, the whole mapping and integration process becomes very easy. So, and it also has the capabilities of making sure that the Workday, it's current with the Workday API, and it provides um, a, a very seamless integration with the underlying Workday API. So you would see all of this better when he shows you the demo. And uh, if you have questions, please feel free to put it out on the chat window. The next, um, the next, uh, it's called Solution Template, is for Microsoft Power BI, and we are very excited about this because this is also one of our um, new addition to the summer release, and we launched it already. But it's a template because it comes up, it comes, it includes a lot of out-of-the-box capabilities of actually building out the whole um, underlying tables and mappings for you and it's catered towards sales management. So if you are in sales operations, this template can help you a lot where, you know, if you install it, if you deploy it, and it um, integrates to the Salesforce site and Microsoft Power BI, and it generates all the underlying infrastructure for you. So there's no need to go and create them yourself. So it saves a lot of time. We have a demo uh, that Abhishek is going to do on that as well. So um, I'm looking forward to that. So the other new connectors are around SAP Conquer and SAP Success Factors. So the integrations are more specifically tied to, you know, more current API usage, as well as um, some of the new features like Connect to Data and SOAP API. So um, the other new connectors are around Microsoft Dynamics CRM and SAP BWBI. So with that, um, the SAP BWBI, uh, what's new is the certification with BW7X and, you know, more seamless and efficient um, data extracts from InfoCubes, InfoCEPs, and data stores um, from SAP BW. So um, there are a lot more features, and once you actually get either, you know, when you start using it or even when you have the slides, you can go through them and um, definitely, you know, reach out to us if you have questions. And then there are more connectors that's coming out from you know, Amazon for Amazon ecosystem like Aurora and Elasticash, which is supporting the NoSQL um, database, and Salesforce Financial Cloud. That's again another major um, announcement from our side where we are supporting the financial cloud. Microsoft Azure Tables, Document DB, Microsoft Dynamics support, SQL Server, um, the latest version, Oracle, and Java 1.8. Besides that, we have a lot of new enhanced connectors from our existing uh, ecosystems like Marketo, NetSuite, Tableau. So they're most, they're all the enhancements are around performance to help you extract, um, transform the data, and connect it in a more advanced, um, efficient ways, and um, to help you achieve your business goals seamlessly with the connectivities. So we have, um, we have already announced this last year where you know, it's an ISV ready program, and we've enhanced it further. With that, we have a lot of new ISVs in that program who are using our um, Informatica, uh, the, connector, uh, the connector SDK framework to quickly build out their solutions integrated to Informatica solu cloud solutions. 
So if your company is in, in, uh, in the space where you're trying to build connectivity using Informatica cloud framework, this program is ideal for you. And some of our newest, um, newest um, ISVs are um, analytics like ThoughtSpot, Couchbase, and Host Analytics, Domo, and Snowflake, and we're really excited for, about each one of them, Anaplan is also an uh, ERP company, which is um, in the same program. And just not that, we have, a date, we have a connector for each and every data source that you can imagine. And please reach out to us. You can also um, go through our website. If you have any question around uh, which connector should work for you, we have a page where you, know, you can um, browse through all the connectors. So with that, I would like to introduce Eric Ho, who's a part of the product management team, and he would give us a brief um, overview and then dive into the demo around Workday. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, Anwarsha. So as a part of uh, demoing uh, the new Workday connector, we'll be verifying connectivity and how we can connect Informatica Cloud with Workday, and then we'll go through getting data out of Workday. So what you should be seeing on the screen right now is Informatica Cloud, and what I'm looking at is a current Workday connection. So when you take a look at this Workday connection, one of the big changes in the, this upcoming release is that we support all the different modules of Workday, all the different services, so you're no longer limited by the fields and the objects that we've defined out of the box. We're supporting everything, and as Anwesha indicated, we're up to date with Workday's version because you can specify the, the version number here as a part of establishing the connection. So when I hit the test button, I just right now verified that there's connectivity between Informatica Cloud and Workday. So now I'm going to go into the mapping designer. I think most of us are familiar with this. But within the mapping designer, what I've already created is a Workday mapping. Uh, before diving into the, the flow, let me just highlight a couple of things that Lolita mentioned earlier. So there's this new sequencing transformation which allows the addition of primary keys or IDs to data sets for further downstream processing, like in a data warehouse flow. And also you could see the new union transformation which allows the bringing together of different data sets uh, together within the mapping designer for, again, for further downstream processing. So if you take a look at this mapping designer flow, what we're doing is extracting data from Workday into two relational output groups. You can see a Workday relational table and an email relational table. And what I'll also highlight, which was mentioned earlier, is the ability to set parameters which persist from one task to the next. Uh, we call them internally in and out parameters. So let's take a look at the Workday connection. So when I take a look at Workday, you'll notice that this connection, connection or connector doesn't necessarily work off of objects like we're normally familiar with. It works off of operations. So when you click the operations button, what we're showing is all the different operations which are available for this uh, Workday service. In addition, what we provide is the ability to request what criteria or the output that you want. So if you take a look at what we're doing right here, is we're selecting data that has been updated from a certain date and through a certain date. What I'm showing right here is you can see that this is a parameterized updated from and updated through. And this is how we're gonna demonstrate the in and out parameters. So when I click the validate button, you can see that yes, the XML message is correct but the date is incorrect. It's only because we're validating this against the Workday XSL, and it still works, but it just gives you a warning that this is improper uh, when we're validating against it. And here's where some of the magic is. So on the left-hand side, what you're seeing is the Workday hierarchical data structure. On the right-hand side is the relational output group. 
So let's expand both of these. So if I type in first name, you could see that we've selected first name. So let, let's take a look, uncheck it. Notice that it disappears on the right-hand side. I'm going to check it again. It appears. Let me type in email. So notice that email, when I uncheck it, it disappears on the right-hand side from the selected output group. When I click it again, it appears. So what we're doing, once again, is transforming this hierarchical data structure of Workday into relational output groups for further downstream processing. Now, what's also important here is you'll notice that our application automatically generates a primary key and a foreign key so that this data can be easily linked together and brought together uh, later on, once again, for example, in a data warehouse scenario. The other thing I want to point out that we're providing is the capability to minimize the number of output groups. So take a look at phone data. When I uncheck it, take a look at the right-hand side, you'll see that the phone data disappears. What this capability that we're showing here with this black suitcase is something what we're calling as packing. So what we're doing here is minimizing the number of output groups. So if I unpack the structure and I select phone number, you'll see that there's another relational output group that's created. To demonstrate packing, let's pack it. So what you'll see is the phone data is added into the, the, the re relational output group that has the primary key. Okay, so let's, so that's the workday and how we're actually bringing the hierarchical data out. Well, let's take a look at this, these in and out parameters that I mentioned earlier. Very powerful, and if you take a look at this, what we're doing is, is we're bringing the date, or we're setting a variable date updated from and updated through, and what we're doing is, at the end of each run, we're gonna be incrementing it by a day. So basically, if you run this task on a daily basis, what you're doing is you're allowing the ability to run this task on a daily basis and see the incrementals. So this is the expression that happens to do that. It could, it could have been created many different ways. But also here, if you click this parameters button on the upper right-hand side, you can see the in and out parameters which are specified, updated from and updated through. So what we're happening to do here is we're going to set a default value of 512 for updated from, and updated through is going to be 513. So we're taking a day's worth of data. So this is the mapping that we've created. And in order to execute this mapping on a periodic schedule, we've actually deployed it to a mapping configuration task. So here's the mapping configuration task. So as you can see, because we had defined some in and out parameters, when you click into that particular tab, you'll see that there's a default value that we specified earlier, May 12th and May 13th. And what will happen is, this value will change at the end of the run based on how we created the expression. So let's run this task. So it'll take a few seconds to run and we'll take a look at how the data looks. Okay, so it successfully ran, 19 rows came out. And take a look, the new value of updated from and updated through happened to increment by one, from 512 to 513 and 513 to 514. So let's take a look at some of the output and how it's going to look like. So this is a task that we just ran. Let's take a look at updated worker. Remember, this is where we pulled out first name, last name. This is how the packed data looks like. So notice that it's a, a large XML output that if you want to just get all this legacy data or get this data and put it in a data warehouse, you can do so very, very easily. And notice that also there's a primary key that's automatically generated. So let me take a look at the email relational output. 
so you can kind of quickly see how the 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 uh, e, the primary keys and and the foreign keys can join these two outputs. Okay, so what we just did is we validated the Workday connection, we tested it, verifying everything was good, and we demonstrated some of these capabilities. For example, selecting an operation, validating the XML, searching, the packing, and the auto-generation of primary key and foreign key. So what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Abhishek for the next demo. Thank you, Eric. And this is Abhishek Sena. What I'll do next is cover a quick demo of the Informatica for Power BI solution templates. As many of you would know, Power BI is a leading data visualization and analytics product from Microsoft. And what we're doing is we are partnering with the Power BI team to deliver a prepackaged solution for data to analytics. And the reason why we're doing is because to implement an analytics project, often the biggest challenge is how to get started. How, how can an analytics project get kick-started and provide some value out of the box so that you can kind of get started with let's say 50% of the solution, and then you can build and customize going forward. So what we're doing is we're building a prepackaged solution which includes data mappings, a sample data schema, which is designed for analytics, as well as prepackaged dashboards and reports that you can show to your end users to demonstrate business value quickly out of the box. And what we are hoping to achieve with the solution is to demonstrate about 40 to 70% of the use cases to be achieved within the next, within a couple of hours, you can stand up these dashboards out of the box. So the screenshot over here shows you a visualization of how the process flows. So the data would be moving from an application, it can be in the cloud, such as Salesforce, Marketo, or Workday, or you can also get data from an on-premise system, such as an Oracle or a SQL Server database. The data would be retrieved by Informatica Cloud and then pushed on to either Azure SQL in the cloud or to an on-premise database such as SQL Server. And from there, the customer has an option to either also uh, install SQL Server analysis services for optimized processing, or they can choose to connect Power BI directly to this database to show the dashboards. So in effect, what we are hoping to achieve is a quick data to analytics story using this prepackaged solution. And we are starting off with a solution for Salesforce sales management analytics. And going forward, we'll be launching more and more solutions down the road. What I'll do next is show you a quick demo of the capabilities and the prepackaged components of this solution. So this is an example of a Power BI dashboard that is available out of the box. So this quickly shows you a very quick snapshot of what's happening. As a sales leader, I can track the performance of the various sales uh, members of my team not only view the month to date, quarter to date, as well as year to date numbers. Similarly, we have dashboards and reports about pipeline data, opportunity data, to give a sales manager a 360 view of all the key sales KPIs for this organization. And once again, the aim is to provide this quickly out of the box so that uh, the customer can kind of get started with some value, 40 to 70% of the end solution. And we're also providing tools by which the customer can then configure and customize to make this suited for the end needs. Now how all of that is run? So in the, in the end, in the backbone, what is actually happening is there's an Informatica task that is running, which is fetching data from the source, in this case being Salesforce, and pushing the data to, uh, to the target, in this case being Azure SQL or SQL Server. So let me go ahead and log into Informatica and show you how that is set up. So this is an example of a task which is bringing data from Salesforce to SQL Server. In this, you'll see that I have my Salesforce connection set up, and this solution by default includes these objects. As you would immediately notice, these are your key standard objects in Salesforce, such as account, opportunities, users, products, and leads. So in a way, not only are we providing you with a kind of the integration and the connection to Salesforce, we also provide the best practices, the, the key KPIs that a sales organization need to track as part of their sales management analytics. So as you can see, the, the standard objects are available out of the box, but just like in Informatica, you can very easily 
choose hit select and customize and choose any objects any standard objects as well as any additional custom objects that you want to build as part of the solution if i move to the next part of the wizard is now you're configuring your sql server connection and one thing you notice over here is that this task is really designed for your analytics use case so for example first time you'll be typically running a full load but after after running the full load you are only interested in incrementing the data you do not you do not want to refresh your cache and your cube all the time so this task in, uh, uh, supports that use case so initially you load your full data but once you have your initial data set all the subsequent data runs will be in incremental mode so that you are only getting the additional data sets and similarly it will also ensure that your schema and your data is consistent with the changes in your salesforce schema for example so it will remove any columns which have been deleted or rows which have been deleted so as to make sure that your source and your target are consistent so once again designed to make sure that your analytics project is successful not only the first time but also going forward you can very easily customize your solution to to cater to your needs as i go through the wizard one point to note over here is that uh, as a customer you don't really need to come here and customize a key part of the solution is that the component that you see over here is prepackaged and is going to be run automatically as part of a script uh, i'm showing this demo just to uh, ensure that you understand that let's say if you have to customize the solution add a few standard fields or change the mapping you can also do that so the aim being provide a prepackaged solution but also give hooks to enable customers to change the solution and finally moving on to the schedule tab uh, this is your standard uh, salesforce to sql server uh, output options a key point to note over here is that we are leveraging the best practices that we have in salesforce connectivity so we provide the ability to so, uh, get access both the standard and the bulk api for salesforce so most cases customers would choose bulk api to uh, ensure optimum performance so this was a quick demo of the components that we have in informatica a key point to note over here is that as a customer they are not expected to create and configure these tasks uh, the workflow i'm showing is just if the customer wants to change or customize the mapping all these mappings will be available as part of the solution so in addition to these mappings what we also have is a sample script which will uh, which will create the analysis ready schema so for example configure the dimensions and measures that power bi can read so once the scripts are run not only will the uh, the data be created that the schema will be created the data will be fetched from salesforce to sql server and then subsequently a view will be created which has the analysis ready schema and then the power bi dashboards are automatically connected to these views so those the dashboard that i showed you just a few moments ago that is ready to go to the box so the aim is in a couple of hours you can go from data to analytics and present 40 to 50% solution of analytics use case in a couple of hours with that i'll end my demo and i'll hand it back to anvesha for the next part of the presentation thank you abhishek so abhishek already stole the thunder here as you can see on the slide we have a new announcement um so any of you who've attended informatica world must you know um and had a good experience i'm sure probably have heard of this already it's the mdm cloud edition so um mdm is already been there existing and um our it's our popular um on premise uh, offering around uh, master data management for all our customers and it's very very um um secured and um so with the same product that's been used and so popular now we have enabled our customers to use it in the cloud on um amazon hosted infrastructure so we are going to and from informatica team we will help our customers support that and host it for them so that takes away a lot of efforts and resources from our customer side to manage the ndm in the cloud so it's going to be the same product the same offerings the same benefits and you can now get all the cloud benefits also along with it 
So that brings us to um, a key uh, a key slide that why Informatica, right? So when we speak about our customers, about the way our customers use it, and not just our customers, but you know all our partners in ISVs, OEMs. So the numbers speak for for it themselves. So we really are very excited and proud to have so many um, customers validating us. And if you attended Informatica World again, you probably were, uh, heard a lot of our customers sh um, sharing their stories out there. So these numbers, which are around, you know, how many transactions, uh, 300 billion transactions per month and a 130% growth year over year, and then more than 1 million of integration jobs that, we, um, that the cloud platform is uh, running. And then um, the number of templates that we have uh, that the Informatica cloud platform and solutions provide for our customers. More than 150 connectors and the connectivity team keeps up every month releasing new and new enhancements. So with that, you know, another uh, very exciting news that came out was that Gartner validating us as a number one, um, number one iPad solution provider based on 2015 market share um, on the revenue, and which is a very big achievement for us. And we are very proud that, you know, um, the, the external market, our customers like us so much, and we are there to help them with all our new innovative solutions that's coming um, with the summer release and beyond. And we have some um, really um, um, high-performing service packs that comes out from our support team at Informatica. So if you need any help um, around the support packs, uh, please reach out to your account manager um, and they can help you out. So depending on your um, contract and agreements, you can definitely reach out to a customer success team. They are different packs um, and a different combination of offerings, starting from um, assigned customer success manager, 24 by seven support, and many other value-added services. And then we have the Cloud Academy, so if you have in-house team, you want to train them, that's the best way to go. Please go and um, log, uh, create a login on Cloud Academy, go through the materials, and it's a lot of self-learning there. And then, of course, the Informatica Network. So make sure you use the network to reach out to us and um, with any kind of support ticket or any kind of issue or question. And on the slide here, you can see the free 30-day trial offer. So if you're new to Informatica Cloud, please um, you know, just go to that link once you have the slide, or you can go to our website, uh, the Cloud and uh, Trial, and download it, try using it, uh, get in touch with us if you have any suggestions, and we'll try to help. Thank you so much.